Down here at the bottom of the screen, we have some very handy trigger controls. All your standard stuff, um, no trigger, uh, auto trigger, and repeat and single. And of course we have movies uh, very much detailing all of this and how it works. Uh, they're just right there selectable. And there you have your, cha your channel you want to choose. Uh, this particular one has a, uh, a repeat trigger selected for channel D. And this reads out in actual voltage, not scale voltage. But what's neat is you can just dra drag this cursor icon around on the screen wherever you want. We have pre-trigger. We can move the uh, uh, anywhere on the screen in any percent of the screen we want. We have a time delay feature for the trigger. Uh, of course, details on that uh, in our training movies. There's also a full complement of advanced triggers that you might normally only find on the high-end scientific scopes. Everything from advanced edge uh, functions to window, pulse width trigger, interval trigger, window pulse width, level dropout, and so on. These are all um, very advanced trigger functions that are all here uh, at your fingertips to use uh, as you may find the need for them. And of course, we also have extensive training movies on the use of all of those advanced trigger functions so that you can become very familiar with them. And uh, so you know which one might serve the purpose you have in mind. So as you can see, there's a heck of a lot of stuff right here at our fingertips. And we're not even done yet just giving you a cursory overview, right? I mean, this stuff goes deep. And there's a lot of more stuff here than meets the eye. Uh, we've got uh, measurement features here. We can add a measurement. Uh, for example, uh, if we want to pull up a measurement for channel A, uh, it could be any one of these different functions for any one of the channels. We can also choose which section of the graph we want to apply the measurement to. Uh, the whole trace uh, between those uh, two vertical rulers and so on. And there's also some advanced stuff associated with that measurements. So with these measurements actually pop up at the bottom of the screen and give you uh, a running tally of what's going on with particularly waveform qualities. And oh hey, oh there's a couple more buttons over here. Uh, math channels, right? These are very handy, and we have some very practical applications uh, for automotive app, uh, use that you can uh, uh, deploy these math channels. Everything from voltage drop to um, all kinds of stuff. So there's, there are things you can do with this. We've got some uh, good tutorials on that as well. Um, here we have uh, something called reference waveforms. And you can actually have stuff in your library here. This works a lot like the custom probes library. You can create these yourself. Let's say you've got a known good cam and crank signal relationship on the screen. And you would like to place that into your reference waveform library for future use. Pull that up later on the screen along with a live one so that you can do a comparison right on the screen. Overlay them right on top of each other, whatever you want to do. A uh, very nice, very powerful feature. This is fairly new in this build. Um, and uh, so we've also got movies, uh, training movies on that feature as well. And for this particular movie, we're using PicoScope version 6.2.2.12. So, um, you know, if you're using the later version, uh, which you probably are if this movie's been out for a while, uh, I'm sure there's more features there that have been added, uh, maybe some that we've already viewed here briefly that might have changed. Um, so the software is not a static thing. It is an evolving, uh, almost living creature these guys are working on all the time. And they're very receptive to their users' feedback and suggestions. And many of the features which we are enjoying today were features that were suggested by members of the AutoNerds Pico group. Any file that you 
capture on your screen here can very easily be saved for future reference. You can save it as a data file. It saves absolutely everything. Uh, you open it up again. It's just like you just made the capture. You can zoom, pan, explore, scroll, um, do anything you could do uh, with any uh, waveform data file. And you can just go up here and you can save these, um, save all the waveforms, which means everything in the waveform buffer index, every single full data buffer screen is going to be saved in a file. Those can get rather large. We also can save um, uh, current waveform, and that would be just the screen you happen to be viewing right at the moment. If you catch caught a bunch of screens and, and really only one of them has anything of interest, has the glitch, the anomaly, whatever you're after on it, and that's the only one you want, you can do that too. So this, what we've been looking at here, is a saved waveform. And uh, so you can do anything with a saved waveform that you can uh, with anything else. And you can also email these or share these uh, with anyone else as well. And they can download the PicoScope, uh, full PicoScope 6 program for free, which allows them also to be able to open these files. Uh, and so we can share files with people that uh, don't have PicoScopes as well as those that do. And we facilitate a lot of that sharing uh, here on the AutoNerds community forums where you can upload your data files and discuss them uh, with other professional technicians all over the world. Uh, these are uh, the most information-rich uh, uh, and exciting automotive lab scope forums on the planet, and registration is free. So be sure to get registered on these forums and check it out. Um, I guarantee you it will not be a waste of your time. Uh, once you've registered, you will be able to post and access all of the forums here in the general public area. And, of course, once you are a member of the PICO group, uh, which means you've either purchased a PicoScope package from AutoNerds or you are a subscriber to our support and training system. Of course, more on that later, how you get involved in this group, this, this uh, incredible group of professionals. The Pico Group area is, is restricted to members of the Pico Group and has extensive information uh, about specific PicoScope-related software changes, uh, support techniques, so you can see all this different stuff. And we'll, uh, we'll give you a brief overview about what some of these uh, support system features are. And of course, because this is PC-based too, printing is as easy as going file, print, right? You want to print a copy for the customer, you want to have a hard copy put in the file with the work order, whatever you want to do, you know, you can do that. You can also save these as images directly from the program or do a print screen and save it to your favorite image editing program, draw circles and lines and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one explaining what each one was. You can do all that stuff, okay, with PicoScope very easily because it is PC based. It's, in, it's easily integrated with all your other favorite PC programs. It plays and works well with other programs resident on the same computer so you won't have hardware conflicts, uh, conflicts with um, uh, any scanner software or other things that you happen to have residing on the same computer. Um, PicoScope is fairly resource intensive. Uh, we do recommend a fairly modern computer with a processor in the gigahertz ranges. Uh, we recommend um, you have to have XP or Vista at this point. We recommend uh, uh, that you also have USB 2.0 uh, required to be able to do the high-speed data streaming that this scope is capable of doing. And we recommend uh, at least a gig of memory for XP and two gigs for Vista. If you have all those things, um, your computer will work well uh, with PicoScope. You may not want to run several resource-intensive programs all at once unless your computer happens to be a supercomputer, as many of them are these days, uh, getting more and more powerful. Uh, but uh, it, it works and plays well with other programs. You can run many programs simultaneously with PicoScope as long as the computer's resources can keep up. 